Welcome, Cine Pals. I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Char Kurt. What's up? We're watching The Machine, Bert Kreischer. Kreischer. Kreischer? The Machine. And so we just watched the trailer to The Machine the other day. I very much enjoyed it. I don't think it was for the reasons that they wanted us to enjoy it for, at least partially. My favorite part was Luke Skywalker in that. Mark Hamill, Mark Hamill. Yeah. yeah, like that was my favorite part of the trailer. But this, what we're about to watch, is the inspiration for that movie, and that makes this super exciting. And apparently it's all true. I mean, as true as a story can be coming from the mouth of a comedian. Yeah. But is based on a true thing. And it was corroborated by a bunch of his friends who were actually on that trip. Unless he like paid the money and was like, I need you to corroborate my story or something. So uh, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Here we go. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian mafia. Here's how it happened. I love that he's not wearing a shirt. I, just... I went to school at Florida State. I was not a very good student. I was there uh, like seven years. I was there th in most of the 90s. Oh my gosh, he really is Ben Wilder. I was in college longer than grunge music was around. Is <laughs> 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 he gonna cry? <laughs> so, this is how bad of a student I was. One time I signed up for a Russian class thinking it was Spanish. And it took three classes before I realized, I don't think this is Spanish. <laughs> so I got up to leave. The teacher, who was hot, he definitely worked out. Uh. I'm kidding. I don't know. It was a girl. It was a girl. And she was hot. She still is hot. She stopped me. She goes, don't go anywhere. I need 14 kids to teach this class. You're the 14th. I need to teach this class in order to get my master's. So if you sit back down, you don't have to do anything all semester, and I'll just give you a C. I was like, uh, Strasvutia, bitches, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> so I took Russian one, two, three, and four, never learned a word. <laughs> Think about what I'm saying. I took two years of a language, took four semesters of my college career, four, four semesters. Russian four was taught in Russian. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it's like to go to a class and sit there like an immigrant at the DMV all day? Like, <laughs> <laughs> The end of Russian 4, same teacher pulls me aside. She's like, we're taking a trip to Russia. If you go, you'll get a minor. I was like, okay, hold on. Okay, hold up. This is wild to me. She said, don't leave and I'll give you a C. Well, she needed that class in order to... But did she say this in front of all the students? I don't think so. I would hope not. The way he was telling the story, it sounded like he was getting up to just go in the middle of class. Well, and she's yeah. like, hey, how about you don't go and I'll give you a C. And he's like, cool. Done. Right, yeah, because you know? then literally everyone would be like, wait, me too. <laughs> exactly. Me too. Except for me, because I would be that nerdy student who's like, no, no, I'm actually here to learn something. Please teach me. You know, I can't really speak, read, write, or understand the language, right? She's like, I'm <laughs> well aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember, I was taking tests in a language with which I was unfamiliar with their alphabet. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it's like to take a test and make up hieroglyphics? <laughs> and the answer is star circle hashtag shoe. <laughs> she goes, it doesn't matter. We need kids to make this trip happen. And if you go with all the classes you've taken and the ones you will take, you will get a minor. And I was like, that's all you had to say. Let's go to Russia and fuck some minors. I was wondering when that joke was coming. Yeah. As soon as she said minor, I was like, isn't he going to talk about like a little kid? Because that seems like the obvious joke. Right. And he didn't go there right away. So I was like, oh, I guess that's not the joke. I, I guess he's taking it kind of seriously, this conversation. And then eventually it came back around. I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is. It's a different, it was different minor, obviously. Learned that the hard way. Oh. <laughs> so we went to Russia in 1995. This is when the mob ran everything, and they told us that our very first night. They sat the whole class down. They're like, listen, we have paid off the mafia to keep you safe. In exchange for our money, they give us two young gangsters. I'm in the room like, this trip just got awesome. <laughs> the word for gangster in Russian is banditi. They go, these banditi are going to live with us. 
They're going to walk you to class. They're going to walk you back from class. They're going to take you on field trips, walk you back from field trips. Do not speak to them. They're in the mafia. Do not look at them. Do not engage them. Do not interact with them. I was like, well, they're going to be my best friends. <laughs> so the first night I grab a bottle of vodka and a six pack of Baltica, which is our local beer, and I planned a sentence. I was going to say, Strasvutsia, Minyasavut Bert, Ochimbriatna, Yarabota, you Koshka. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Does anyone speak Russian in here? Good. I love that someone says no. <laughs> well, <laughs> I did a head count earlier. It doesn't look like it. I'll tell you what the sentence says. It's a badass sentence. I worked all day on it. Hello, my name's Bert. It's very nice to meet you. I work pussy. <laughs> kind of. It really means I work with cats. I didn't know the language what do you expect <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter because the second the door opens and i'm face to face with a real russian gangster with the wife beater and the tattoos with the track pants and the cigarette and it, he just stares me up and down a frat boy from florida state i was wearing a fanny pack <laughs> he just looks at me and goes stole i f panicked and everything i had planned on saying flooded out of my head and all i said to him in russian in his doorway was i am the machine <laughs> And he started laughing. He goes, what did you say? I was like, I'm the machine. <laughs> he grabs me and he goes, come in and tell my friends. Brings me in a room full of nine Russian gangsters drinking and smoking and just goes, stop. <laughs> tell them what you said. <laughs> now I'm like, fuck it. I'm the machine. <laughs> they looked at each other, looked at me and they're like, fuck it. He's the machine. <laughs> and I became the machine. And these guys loved me. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. You got to realize, though, the reason they loved me is I went shot for shot with them that night, all night long, until like four in the morning. But all I knew how to say in their language was, I'm the machine! <laughs> and I f*** cats. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> we did everything together. We, uh, like the guy that answered the door, his name was Igor. He was like my best friend. We did everything together. We ran a pool hall scam. We stole a boat. <laughs> it was literally the best summer of my life. Wow. And then one day, the whole class is taking a trip to Moscow. It's an overnight train trip. And I say to Igor, I go, this is going to be a blast. We got to be in the same cabin. And he goes, I can't go. I said, why not? And he goes, different mafia runs train, different mafia runs Moscow. I said, well, hold on. What's that mean for me? And he goes, don't worry, I set up banditi, I tell them about you, they'll take care of you. Sure enough, we get to the train station and he introduces me to my two new gangsters, Igor and Igor. <laughs> <laughs> and he says to me, he goes, guys, this is the machine, if you give the machine vodka, you'll have a great time. <laughs> the big ear of the two Igors looks like a kid on Christmas, he's like, oh, I can't wait to play with a machine. <laughs> He grabs me and he goes, the machine doesn't sit in coach. The machine sits in first class with us. I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we go to first class and it is pimped out with booze, food, and here's the real gangster part. Second, the train takes off out of the station. Everyone that works on the train comes in to pay their respects. The conductor walked in. <laughs> Rips off the stars and stripes to his shirt, places them on my lap and goes, this is a present for the machine. <laughs> wow. It would be an honor to do a shot of vodka with the machine. I'm 22 years old thinking, huh, these machine stories might have gotten out of control. <laughs> <laughs> we drink all the booze in an hour and Big Igor stands up and he goes, machine, we go to the bar cart to get more vodka. I'm like, fuck it, I'm in the mob, I'll do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> we roll into the bar cart like a big dick in a locker room. Just, not that I've ever been that guy, but I've seen it. <laughs> Just smack. You know the look where everyone looks like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> oh, someone's here, okay, all right. <laughs> Igor looks at me and in Russian he says, machine, go behind the bar and grab bread. In Russian, in Russian. And I understood him. Yeah, good for you. For a second I'm like, I'm fucking learning. <laughs> I'm learning the language my way, not through flashcards and textbooks but by joining the mafia. <laughs> I get behind the bar, I'm like, Igor, I know what you said. He's like, go for your machine. <laughs> and the machine find cheese. And I was like, Sir, cheese, I got it. Give me another one. And he's like, grab vodka. I was like, I already know that one. Give me another one. <laughs> he's like, grab the money. I'm like, 
huh? <laughs> he goes, grab the f money. And I realized at that instant, uh, we're robbing the bar cart. <laughs> and I'm the one doing it, hooked on phonics style. <laughs> I grab the money, walk out. Two of my classmates see me and they're like, you're in so much trouble. <laughs> Go back to our first class cabin and within five minutes, the head chaperone of this train trip, not the whole trip, just this train trip. She was an English teacher who did not speak Russian, who hated me before I robbed the train. <laughs> <laughs> she comes over to our first class cabin and swings the door open with that like liberal arts confidence, just... <laughs> <laughs> this shit is over <laughs> you're done you're done stand up right now you you stand up stand how how you're done stand up and big eager looks at me confused then smiles takes a big sip of vodka spits it in her eyes and goes no one talks to the machine like that <laughs> oh my gosh wow shuts the door in her face and goes that bitch this is russia <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, machine, when it gets dark, we have good time. I'm like, what the f are we doing when it gets dark? <laughs> Reaches into his pocket, pulls out a ring of keys, and he goes, we're robbing the whole fucking train. <laughs> I'm a good person. I don't cheat on, I don't cheat on, this is why, I, let me tell you, I don't cheat on my wife. I don't cheat on my wife because one morning our whole family was in bed, the dogs, the cats, the girls, my wife, and we were just giggling and it was pure, it was perfect. And I, don't, I thought to myself, I don't ever want to screw this up. This is the most important thing. This is what it's, life's about. And they got up to make chop, chocolate chip pancakes and I laid in bed and I said, I will never cheat on my wife. I had a conversation with myself. I said, if I ever get into a situation where a hot girl's flirting with me or I think she's flirting with me and it seems like it could go further, I'm just gonna cock block myself. I'm just gonna look her in the face in front of everyone and go, I don't cheat on my wife! <laughs> now, I may be wrong. She may not be hitting on me. <laughs> she may throw a drink in my face, slap me. Or I may be right, I, none of that matters to me. What matters to me is that I don't cheat on my wife because I've already had that conversation. Here's the problem. I never had that conversation about robbing trains. <laughs> so when presented the opportunity, I thought I'd be like, not me, I'm gonna go back and work on my verbs. <laughs> but apparently when presented the opportunity, I'm the guy that's like, fuck it, let's start with my class. <laughs> oh my God. So we robbed them first. While they slept, if that makes it better, and then we robbed the whole train. And if there's any consolation, we robbed me too. My bag was with them. <laughs> and then we drank all night long. All night long. Like literally until six in the morning. Top five drunkest I've ever been without throwing up in my entire life. We pull into Moscow at 6 a.m. I'm pissed drunk. You ever been so drunk? You're like, I know I got a piss, but I can't find my dick. <laughs> what? Train stops. Is that up. real? No. I'm hammered. Door opens. Same teacher, not mad. Curious, right? Uh -huh. She looks me in the eyes, smiling, and goes, I want to be the one to tell you they've alerted the police. And I look out, and on the platform, my whole class is standing there with a cop, talking, they're upset, they've been robbed, I get it. <laughs> Apparently, they've never heard snitches get stitches. Yeah. <laughs> Big Igor sees this, and it's completely unfazed. He's like, oh, don't worry, I talked to police for both of us. I was like, oh, thank God. He cracks a bottle of vodka. I'm like, nah, I wouldn't bring that out to an officer, maybe. <laughs> Lights a cigarette, walks out to the cop, who's taking a statement. The cop is taking a statement. Igor walks up behind him, grabs him by the arm, spins him around and goes, F you. <laughs> we f you in the mouth. We f you in the ass. We, I'm like, stop with the f we shit. <laughs> Now the cop is just staring at me and I hear him bark out, Pindum, sit down, sit down, which I don't even know what that means, but it doesn't sound like, you're okay, stay there. <laughs> it is a come to Jesus moment where you know you fucked up. All I thought as I walked to the cop, who's standing in front of the class, I just robbed. Next to the gangster, I robbed them with, my only thought was, this isn't how I plan on spending my second junior year. <laughs> And the gulag taking hot dicks to the throat. Oh, no. I get five steps from the cop who looks impatient as shit. He takes two big-ass steps, 
grabs me by the arm, spins me away from my class, away from Igor, pulls me right into his face, and he goes, So, I understand you're the machine. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what the hell? Nice. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Tonight you party with us. What? I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, tonight you party with us, yes? And I looked at him, and I was like, wait. I'm not in trouble. And he gets so close to me, I can smell his morning cigarette. And he goes, no. <laughs> Fuck that bitch. This is Russia. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> wow. Wow. What a story. They should make them th that into a movie. They then. should. That's a really compelling story. That's a super compelling story. Uh -huh. I can't wait to see the movie that they haven't made of this yet. Yeah. You know what would be crazy? What? Is if they got Han Solo to play his dad. Oh, what if they could get uh, Luke Skywalker instead? Wow, that's such good improv. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come up with that one? I Sorry. don't know. I was trying to save your ass. I didn't know you did that on purpose. Save my ass from what? I was doing just fine. Oh, okay, whatever. Anyway, I'm really glad that you guys recommended that. You know, like outwardly when you meet Russians, they can seem very, you know, stiff. If you get the opportunity to party with them. I have not partied with a Russian Apparently, before. it's just wild. You know, it's just crazy. Of course, they can handle their vodka. And it's amazing that he's not dead after drinking all that uh, alcohol. But I guess being a frat boy in Florida was good training for, <laughs> for drinking with the mafia in Russia. But that was a fantastic story. That's pretty wild. The closest experiences I've had to stuff like that is hanging out with wealthy people. You've done the same thing. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. rich people who have like so much money to burn that they just don't give a shit. And, like crazy rich Asian you know, style. Yeah, yeah. Ex that's exactly yes. it. It's just like I've hung out with those kinds of people who just like can afford the most expensive sushi on the block and afford to take you to Vegas and afford the this and that. And it's just, just lace you with money to go gambling with. I've had those experiences. And it's weird because they operate by a completely different set of rules. And I was about the same age, too, when, you know, I was hanging out with this Scientologist Korean guy who had all the money to spend. And he just laced me with bucks to go gamble with. It was weird. But it wasn't like that. No. <laughs> it, it, that, it, that sounds really, really wild. And that's the story that he's telling. Yeah. So I'm sure that there was so much more that happened that he didn't talk about or that he can't talk about but I love his storytelling as well because he has such an expressive face mm -hmm. and he's able to just kind of uh, you know embody the different characters in his story really well and like people were also saying that he's the inspiration for Van Wilder one of my favorite movies when I was in college because I just thought this is wild this person is crazy there is no way this is a real life person and then as soon as he started talking I was like yep that's him that's the real life Van Wilder always ready for a party fun times I think that my one concern with the movie is the hyperbole that's going to follow because I feel like if you took a dramatic approach to that story it's more funny almost like a Coen Brothers kind of movie as opposed to something that's just like absurd and over the top in terms of like ha ha isn't that funny ha ha look how crazy we are like taking a Coen Brothers approach would be my hope for that kind of movie because like you think about the drama that goes into the police officer pulling him aside I'm thinking damn he's screwed if you take a dramatic approach to that yeah. with the pregnant pause and the suspense. But I, I'm sure yeah. that can all be in there and then the, the comedy is much like it is here like oh no he's not screwed because we're in Russia. Yeah. I mean I can kind of relate to that in a sense because like growing up in Asia in the 90s and 2000s you know it was the same it's mm. like we don't operate by the same rules yeah don't worry you're not in trouble how much money have you got that's uh, something i can imagine you'd be able to retell for the rest of your life forever yeah. that that story has so much mileage it's no yeah. wonder that it's being made or has been made into a movie until that's your wife crazy. is just sick of you yeah. you guys thanks so much for hanging out i'm jabby koi this is a kirk peace out